Jonathan, thanks ever so much um, for taking some time out to, to speak to us today. Really appreciate it. Um, worked a lot over the last uh, year or so together and, and appreciate your time talking about that uh, that project. How are you today? Everything well? I'm great, thank you, Lee. How are you? Yeah, very good. So look, to kick off to kick off this conversation, I'd love to know a bit more about, um, for the audience out there, love to know a little bit more about First Group. Could you let us know about who First Group are and, and of course, what your role is within First Group, please? First Group is one of the major public transport providers in the UK. And although we operate in the US as well, uh, through brands like Greyhound and so forth, over here we're focused on our rail franchises, which are Transpennine Express, Avanti West Coast, Great Western Railway, South Western Railway, and Hull Trains, and also our bus network, where we operate through a number of different operating companies across the country. Uh, a couple of our larger ones being West Yorkshire and Glasgow. Um, so my role is head of CRM development for first customer contact and for the duration of the Salesforce implementation that we're going to be talking about today, I've been fulfilling that role for first rail holdings, where I'm responsible for the CRM system, which we've implemented across our uh, rail division. So um, I think we first met probably 2019, back in 2019 when we're looking at this project, looking at the, the challenges that, that you guys um, were experiencing across the rail network and, and, and within the business. Um, but let's, let's focus on that. What, what were some of the challenges that you were uh, uh, seeing with, with regard to this project, especially at a time, obviously, when that global pandemic had started? And how did IBM, the IBM expertise, um, alleviate some of those project uh, uh, challenges? So this project's been about centralizing and bringing about a best in class customer relationship offering for all of our rail franchises that I've mentioned before. So from, a, and I guess from a public transport perspective, it's been a little bit of a game of catch up as historically, this has been an, an industry that's perhaps not been quite as advanced from a customer service perspective as other industries may be. Uh, and yeah, you've mentioned the global pandemic, so it's definitely worth touching on that. I think delivering this project and, and creating the project team, working with you guys with the very tight timelines that we had would have been sufficiently challenging within itself. But working remotely, doing everything across Zoom right up until go live is no mean feat, really. And I think you know, in all seriousness, I think the fact that we've managed to do it is testament to the flexibility that everyone, uh, IBM, ourselves, Salesforce, has had to develop under these circumstances, really. And I think I'd also just point out another sort of challenge that we had, which is about mapping user stories. Obviously, the user stories being the start point and, um, of, of the project. Um, that was quite a difficult thing to do because we were translating different customer service offerings that previously existed into an approach that works for our centralized solution uh, and one that made the best of the, the Salesforce platform, I guess. So we, 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 we met in 2019, we started this project in a global pandemic, we kind of delivered this thing, I might say we all of us delivered this thing in this global pandemic across Zoom uh, or, or WebEx. Um, fast forward to today, you know, what has the what have the outcomes been of this project? So uh, we've brought together a centralised customer service operation in our first customer contact centre, which is in Sheffield. So that all of our phone calls, our emails, our web forms, live chat, and mail channels uh, route into our fresh deployment of Salesforce Service Cloud. So we now have the uh, one customer experience platform, in my opinion probably the world's best CRM platform, and one team of highly specialized agents and operational staff making opt optimal use of it so that we can much better serve the customer and exceed the SLAs, which not only our customers expect, but that the rail regulator demands of us as well. Uh, and, I, and I think we've gone further with this uh, throughout the build, uh, working collaboratively with, with IBM. We've identified opportunities to make wider use of Salesforce. Um, and this is something that we did mid project. Uh, for example, the new contact center didn't have a learning management platform. So we researched, designed and incorporated our training into my, my trailhead, 
which was a relatively new offering from Salesforce. Uh, for me, that was really important given the impact of the pandemic. We knew we weren't going to have loads of boots on the ground come go live. And I wanted my 200 and odd users, all who were new to Salesforce, to be able to learn from within the system without leaving it and allowing them to get comfortable with it, if you like. Uh, we've also made sure that knowledge base has been developed at the heart of the solution so that, again, our agents can get the information they need without leaving Salesforce. Now, we've had to incorporate thousands of articles which have been built up through experience in our previously separate train operating companies, making them searchable and ensuring that they're offered up to our agents at the right time. So um, how has the how has the Salesforce platform then changed the way you operate? Can you share what, for example, customer 360 means to your organization? Something we talk about a lot in the Salesforce ecosystem. Historically, the, the rail industry from an IT perspective, let's say, has been characterized by lots and lots of complex, disconnected uh, legacy systems. So I think we've been quite pragmatic in our build, keeping integrations as simple as possible and ensuring that the processes we've built out from this implementation are also as simple as possible. And that kind of enables our agents to get the maximum benefit from the Salesforce omni-channel solution. Um, one of the big benefits for me is that we've been almost able to clean slate our offering. You know, we're starting from scratch and, and we've been able to look at developments to fully take in that sort of 360 degree approach. Uh, one example of that is incorporating a new CSAT solution so that we can measure the impact of our customer services with our customers. Uh, again, incorporating that within Salesforce so that the results are stored against the cases that we've been handling and we can report on and so forth. Uh, and I guess the other benefit of that is that we've, with, with this sort of clean slate approach, we've been left with a clear line of sight in terms of our roadmap for the future. So that not only do we continue offering a best in class solution, but we can improve on it. Uh, we can understand the pain points of our operational staff and be in a position to incorporate more channels and services as First Rail develops its offering within the industry. So, so interestingly, as you know, you, you, you're, a, you're a keen reader of, of IBM's The State of Salesforce each year. Um, and, and, and as you know, it's an annual report showing how, how the best companies around the globe use Salesforce. And, and we've seen companies incorporating AI into Salesforce, um, the whole platform. Um, and there's a reoccurring trend around AI, Salesforce, and, and, and other systems, of course. Um, in fact, just this year alone, um, as I'm sure you know because you read it, Jonathan, we found the amount of organizations using enterprise AI has increased by 150%. So how do you see then, when we think about where you are now, what you're thinking about doing, you know, kind of in the short term, but then more long term, how do you see AI fitting into your service strategy? We've introduced Einstein case classification into the process. That's especially helpful for us because the regulator, the rail regulator requires that customer complaints and inquiries are categorized in quite a complex way um, in order to achieve uniformity across the industry. So in our solution, our incoming web forms and emails come in and then categories are recommended by Einstein to our indexing agents to speed up that process. And of course, this solution and the, and the people that are using it learn from the accuracy that Einstein achieves and, uh, and that improve, and it improves on it the more we use it. But of course, we're, we're always cognizant that the AI is only as good as the data it can learn from. So we were very thorough in our model building, allowing it to use as much of the old data from the old system as, as possible. Um, and we're now at the stage where after a few months of operation, we can see how it's operating and, and review its accuracy and see if there's any tweaks we need to make and so forth. Going back to that sort of clean slate approach, we're now looking at opportunities to benefit further from AI, but, but in a way which steps onto what we've built already. So things like case routing, next best response, etc. So AI and its place in automation for us is very exciting and it's full of opportunity but we are making sure that we underpin that approach um, by ensuring that it's built on you know solid reliable data 
Yeah, brilliant. Look, thanks, Jonathan. Um, really appreciate the time and effort you've, you've given me today um, across this, this interview. Oh, that's a pleasure, Lee. Thank you. Thank you.